In this demo, I want to go ahead and look at variable scope in JavaScript. <clears throat> and variable scope in JavaScript is, is pretty straightforward. Um, to, to demo this, I'm going to go ahead and start with an HTML page. And I'm going to title it variable scope. And I'll have an external JavaScript file called scope.js. And at the bottom of the page, I want to kick off a function. So we've done this in the past. I'm just going to kick off a function called init. I'll invoke that function. And I'm going to go ahead and save that on my desktop in a new folder called scope. And I'll use the convention of using index.html as my HTML file name. OK, I, I want to create my JavaScript file to link these things together. And I'll have my init method. And what I want to do is I want to declare a couple variables. So we know that I want to declare variables uh, using the let keyword. So if I say name is equal to Brian Witkowski, I have a variable that's declared inside the init method. And the scope of this variable is anywhere inside of this init method. I have access to this variable. So if I want to do a console.log to see the name, uh, that's going to be just fine. So I should be able to open that file in a browser. I'm going to inspect so I can bring up the developer tools. And in my console, you can see that I'm logging my name. It's no problem. However, let's say I want to have a function that's going to print my name. Okay, so if I try to do that same console.log down in this function, uh, what we're going to run into is that we do not have access to the variable name. We're trying to access a variable that exists and lives only inside this init method. That variable name doesn't exist in the print name method. Okay, so I've saved it. I go ahead and refresh it. You'll notice that when I try to print the name, I'm running into issues. Okay, so on line 12, I, I don't have a name. <clears throat> okay, if I were to move that variable declaration outside of the init method, Essentially, what I have now is a variable that is not declared within a block. And what that's going to do is it's going to give that variable global scope. So you'll notice now it works just fine to print the name because that name variable exists anywhere within this script. Okay, Because the variable is not defined within a block. Okay. Same with constants. So scope is going to follow the same exact convention, whether I'm using a let variable or a const. Um, that doesn't change the fact of where I can actually access the variable versus where I can't. OK, so scope is really pretty straightforward. If I, if I use the let keyword, that variable is available anywhere inside of the block in which it was declared. Um, if it's not declared within a block, we refer to them as global variables, and they'd be available anywhere within this script. Okay, so a couple of uh, more interesting things, or I guess more, um, more ambiguous things. Um, we talked about how we could declare a variable using the var keyword. So if I said, you know, here's my email. So it's bwitkowski at madisoncollege.edu. So I, I use that to declare my email. Uh, I can log my email. OK, life's good there. So I have my email. Um, that scope convention will follow for variables as well. So if I do a console.log of my email in print name, uh, that variable is not defined inside a print name. It's defined in init. It's only accessible within the init method. Uh, so I'm going to run into a problem accessing the email. So you'll notice that I get an error saying email is not defined. I have a scope error um, with email. Okay, so that, that's the way it should be. It's only accessible within the init method. Uh, if I move my email outside of that block, so I move it outside of my function definition, um, now I have a global variable. The email is accessible in both places. Life's good. Um, however, one quirk of JavaScript, and I mentioned it in a, a past video, is what if I have an email, but I omit the var keyword? 
and the let keyword and the const keyword, I don't declare that variable, so to speak. So I just say, here's something that's email, it's equal to bwitkowski at madisoncollege.edu. Um, and JavaScript says, yep, that's okay. And you'll notice when I refresh this, nothing changed. And the reason for that is the way JavaScript handles this. So JavaScript knows that I didn't declare that variable. So there is no var or let or const keyword in front of it. So what JavaScript says, I don't know what this is, you must want a variable. And because JavaScript says that, uh, what it does is it actually creates a global variable for me. So email becomes a global variable, um, even though I may not have intended it to be a global variable. I may have intended the scope to be just this init method. Okay? And you're, you're thinking to yourself, you know, why is that bad? So, I, again, I've mentioned this already in one of the videos. Uh, you want to keep your variable scope as small and local as possible. If I'm going to ac access a variable only inside of a loop, then I want to make sure that the variable is only accessible inside that loop. Um, if I want to use it only within my init method, then I want to declare it in the init method. The reason for that is it makes it so much easier to debug. If I know that this variable is defined here in the init method, the only thing that could go wrong with this variable has to occur inside the init method. If I'm talking about this, this constant name, if anything goes wrong with it, now I have to look through the entire script. Okay, so uh, a, a global variable makes me look through the entire script, which could be thousands of lines of code long, to find a problem, versus a variable that's defined inside of a function definition that might only be 10 lines of code long. I'd much rather debug 10 lines of code than the entire script. So uh, when you're writing your code, you might have the whole problem in your head and you know every single line of code on your thousand line code project and that's great but then step away from it for a year and you're not going to remember any of it and you're not going to want to look through a thousand lines of code and you're not going to want to refamiliarize yourself with all the code so the the rule of thumb is I want to keep my variable scope as local as possible okay so uh, if I omit the variable declaration keywords, so let or var or const, JavaScript says, oh, you must want a global variable. And I never want a global variable. And even if I did want a global variable, I want to be explicit about it. Okay? And the reason I say that is on line five, I look at email equal to bwitkowski at madisoncollege.edu, and my initial reaction is, where the heck did that come from? I didn't declare it in the init method. I have no idea where this is declared. I would go look and see if there's a global variable. There's not. And if I'm not really comfortable with JavaScript, I wouldn't know, oh, JavaScript created a variable for me, and that was the first time I actually accessed that variable, so it created it as a global variable. If I really do want a global variable, create a global variable. Okay, so I'm creating a global variable. And the effect on my application is no different than what I had before. So whether line two is there or not, the application is going to work exactly the same way. You'll see that it works exactly the same way. But I'm communicating to other developers now. So on line two, I'm communicating to other developers that, hey, I have this variable email, and it's used throughout the script. If I don't have that, so if I just get rid of line two, I'm using email here, I'm using email here, where the heck did email come from? I have no idea. I, I'm not communicating my intention through my code. So... Rule of thumb in JavaScript is always declare your variables, whether you're using the var keyword or the let keyword or the const keyword. And again, we have priority there, right? Where we want constants first. If we can't have constants, then we want to use the let keyword. And then for legacy applications and for backwards compatibility, we might use the var keyword. But let's communicate our intentions. Our variable scope, variables, have scope of the block that they're declared in. 
with the exception of variables, var keyword. Var keywords don't have block scope. The only scope they have is function level scope and global scope. Okay, so they're a little bit different than the let keywords, but I don't want to spend too much time on that because we don't want to use the var keyword anyway. So scope is block level scope. We want to keep scope as local as possible. And if we are going to use global variables, let's declare our intent, meaning we're going to declare our variables as global variables at the top of our script to communicate to other developers that this is what we intend as opposed to having a variable that we didn't declare that magically becomes a global variable and we don't have any, um, there's no recognition. By looking at line four, we don't know that email's a global variable. It just happens to show up there. And same thing on line 11. It just happens to show up there. Okay, so we're going to communicate our intent, uh, especially when we're scoping variables. And it just makes our lives so much better when we're debugging our applications later.